Today, I'm at the National Museum of the United States Air Force, and this right here is the Hexagon KH-9 Reconnaissance Satellite. This thing has an interesting story. Let me tell you about it. So this was a Cold War era satellite, a film-based reconnaissance satellite. It took high-resolution images of the Earth's surface, again using film, which they then had to get back to Earth to develop, unlike the digital imaging satellites that we have today. The satellite carried twin cameras and over 60 miles of Kodak film, which was producing images with enough detail to spot objects less than two feet across from 100 miles up. Each satellite then had four film pods, which would return to Earth as each one of them filled with exposed film. An analyst would then review those images, much of what would have been over Soviet territory at the time, and then if something was identified that needed higher resolution, they could have another satellite get a closer look. Now coming from the rear of the satellite, I'll show you these are the cameras, this entire silver canister from here down over to here. And then this black circle, that's the lens. That's the, that's the opening that allowed the light to come into the camera. And there were two of those. So you see this one here on this side of the satellite. And then there's another one over on the other side they were tilted at 10 degrees, so this one was tilted 10 degrees aft, the other one 10 degrees forward, and that allowed you to have that stereoscopic view. Each one of them would have been fed by a separate roll of film. Each of these missions had four recovery capsules, and they were released at different times when each was filled with its share of film. The capsule would re-enter the atmosphere release a parachute at around 50,000 feet, and they did this near Hawaii. And then an Air Force plane would catch that open parachute with a hook system under the plane. So they actually had multiple planes flying in the area ready, and whichever plane was closest when they located the, the pod as it was coming in, they would send that plane to retrieve it. Sounds like something out of Mission Impossible, but that's what they were doing to get these things, so they never would hit the water. Now the film would have been fed from reels that were back here in the, the rear of the, the bottom of the satellite, that were the rear of the satellite. They came through the cameras, the film came through the cameras. And then we have the recovery pods up here and the satellite is displayed in such a way that we can see various stages of these recovery pods, these recovery vehicles. This first one here, it's actually the last one, I believe, in the way they would have been delivered because they started at the front. So this would have been the last uh, pod to have been delivered back to Earth. And this one still has the heat shield on it. This is a pod, the gold one, that has the heat shield removed for display purposes. This one has no shield at all. So that would be the second from the front. And then the front pod is completely missing, but it would, have, it would have been in this spot right here. Now this is really interesting. This is the second of the two pods, and you can see these pinkish colored tan, there's two of them. These strips, that's the film. That's where the film would have been. So it came from the canister in the rear of the satellite, went through the cameras, and was fed through these. And then this is the, the example area here. This is the first pod. Well, it was, it's missing. And you can see right in here, the ends of the film. So this empty area for the front pod is on display over here in a cutaway version where we can see inside. The heat shield up here, the inner shield, and then this is what would have held the film itself. And again, you can see in here that there's, there's two strips, one for the left camera, one for the right. That's where the film would have been stored and then this vehicle would have departed the satellite and returned to Earth. 
to be developed. These satellites were launched from a Titan III rocket. Now, they don't have a Titan III here. This is a Titan V, so this would have been a model that was put into use after the, the hexagon satellites were retired. But it gives you some idea of how they would have gotten this thing into space. So this entire white canister here, this would have been an area for cargo, like a satellite. And these were used to launch later reconnaissance satellites with the, the rocket engines down on the bottom end, the two boosters. So I realize here we have some things in the foreground, including a satellite, and that back there is the Apollo 15 capsule, actually, that sent us to the moon on Apollo 15. But the, the white cargo area of the rocket, that's what these satellites would have been launched in. And the rocket back here with the boosters on the sides. And again, this is a Titan V. This came out after these reconnaissance satellites were retired but it gives you some sort of an idea of what these satellites were launched with. In all, there were 20 of these hexagon missions. 19 of them were successful, and they returned film back to Earth. The very last mission, the 20th one, was in 1986, and the launch vehicle exploded, and it destroyed the satellite. That was just months after the Challenger disaster. While these satellites captured some of the most detailed images of their time, it was really a disposable camera in a sense, because once the film was used up and the capsules were jettisoned, the satellite was deorbited and it burned up upon reentry. The entire program from development through its last mission with the inflation calculation cost about 18 billion. So with 19 successful missions, you're talking about close to a billion dollars each time one of these satellites went up into orbit. And then, like I say, it was basically disposable. And then this program was declassified in, t in um, 2011. So up until that point, the public really didn't know these details. Today, this is the only surviving satellite. It's on display here, the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Dayton, Ohio. This, of course, was never launched. It's the last and only complete hexagon in existence. And if others were preserved, they're not accessible to the public. This is one of those random things that you find in a museum that's just really, really interesting. Wanted to share it with you. See you down the road.